Our scripture reading this morning comes to you from the book of Romans. It's just one verse. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Very, very powerful message or a very powerful scripture, I believe. Romans 1, 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. This is the word of God, and may he richly bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this particular passage. And Father, we pray that as we hear this word spoken this morning, we really are witnesses. And Father, there is nothing to be ashamed about as a Christian. We just pray that, dear Lord, as we encounter this message, you would give us strength and courage and hope. And Father, we pray that you would bless the, the people that are listening with your spirit. And I pray for a mighty anointing to be upon me, Lord. That as I speak, Father, speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of this morning's message is Not Ashamed. And you know, recently they've been doing some renovating on the Washington uh, Monument. Has anybody ever been out to see that Washington Monument? It's pretty neat, huh? Would you believe in 20, 2011, actually, the Washington Monument went through an earthquake and also a hurricane? And it's, uh, I'm not sure if people have been allowed to go back up into the Washington Monument. They haven't, Tony? Nope. Did you know that, uh, well, they've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars renovating that thing, but they found an inscription recently in the Washington Monument that was written in the 1800s. And I wanted to share that with you this morning. Something that they have come across, it's by a guy who signed it BFB. No one knows who that is, but this is what he penned. He said, whoever is the human instrument under God in the conversion of one's soul erects a monument of his own memory more lofty and enduring than this. Now, they began construction on the Washington Monument in 1848. It actually was finished back in the uh, later 1800s, but it at the time was the tallest thing in the world, the tallest building in the world until 1889, until what? The Eiffel Tower, that's right, in Paris, France. So anyway, so there's a lot that goes into witnessing, isn't there? I mean, about leading other people to Jesus. You know, I can remember when I first heard that scripture read. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was at a common concert, a common concert in Monroe, Louisiana. There were thousands of teenagers screaming. And Carmen, anybody familiar with that guy, Carmen? Well, he's a Christian artist that was popular in the late 80s, early 90s. He's since been diagnosed with cancer, folks. So we need to keep him in our prayers. But anyway, he made that announcement in Monroe at the Civic Center in front of thousands of teenagers. And I believe it's even recorded on some of his music. I also heard that quoted over here at the middle school by the principal in front of the entire school assembly. She said, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And man, I thought with as much as of intolerance that's taking place today, I thought that was a big step for her, you know, to make that statement in a public school system, set volumes. But she was given her witness right there, wasn't she? Now, not long ago, there was a group of Christians who were surveyed. And the question that they were asked was, have you witnessed or do you tell other people about Jesus? What would you think the response would be or what sort of findings they would come up with? Would you believe that only 2% of those who participated in that actually at any point in their life had ever shared Jesus with anybody? So we have a job to do, don't we? We have a lot of work to do as Christians to share the gospel. So I want to talk to you this morning about witnessing. What is witnessing? Well, Mark tells us in chapter 16, verses 15 through 16, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Acts 22:15 says, For you will be his witnesses to all men of what you have seen and heard. Now the Greek word for witness is a word that I cannot say, but it actually means exactly what Tony said just a moment ago, that you are a spectator of anything, of something, of anything, you know, and that you share what you saw with somebody else. Interestingly enough, 
I can say this Greek word. This is another word that I'm thinking of later on in the sermon. But the Greek word here for witness is martus. Now, what does that sound like to you? Does it sound like the word martyr? Because we get our word from that Greek word for witness today. We get the word martyr from that word, which actually means someone who gives their life because of their faith. Has anybody ever done that? And I think because of that, when we start talking about witness, we start feeling a little weird inside, right? We might start thinking, well, you know, witnessing is kind of fearful. It brings a little fear into our lives to witness. Do you believe that? Is it uncomfortable to tell other people about Jesus? I want you to give yourself a science test today. I want you to go eat out somewhere and sit in the middle of wherever it is you're eating at, at and I want you to say a blessing over your meal. And then you're going to know what I'm talking about. That stuff that kind of comes up, you know, that feeling of uncomfortableness. Now, there was a barber who was a Christian, and he was vowing to tell people about Jesus Christ. He wanted to tell people about Jesus, and so he thought, you know, I've got the perfect opportunity to do this. And so he worked himself up. He studied some Bible verses. He went to Sunday school. He learned how to do it. And he got his first customer in about 8 o'clock that morning, and he was all prepared. The guy came in to get his hair cut. And, you know, he just worked himself up into such a frazzle, he couldn't do it. And so the, the guy got up and left, and so he thought, you know, the next guy that comes in, I'm going to share Jesus with them. And about 10 o'clock the next, or that same morning, a group of men come in, right? And they all want their hair cut. And so he gets intimidated, and he's making a little money, forgets to share Jesus. And when they leave, he gets frustrated with himself again. And about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the next customer comes in, and he's still frustrated. I'm going to tell this guy about Jesus, and he's just too scared to do it. And so the day is coming to an end about 6 o'clock. Customer comes in. This is it. I'm going to tell this person about Jesus. And so the guy comes over, and he sits down, right? And he's waiting to get his hair cut. And the guy somehow, he, he, the, the barber can't remember the Bible verses or the Sunday school lessons, and he just gets all sweaty and you know nervous and emotional about it he takes a straight razor and he walks over to the guy and all that could come out is are you ready to die that's all he could say you know he was afraid <laughs> he was afraid the bible tells us there in the opening part of the section it says for i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ that's the greek word that i can't say it's it's several uh, letters long but it means not wanting to do something because of shame or embarrassment I am not ashamed of the gospel you might say I'm not embarrassed of the gospel or I'm I don't feel shame when I stand up as a Christian witness for Jesus Christ I'm proud to be a Christian that was the Apostle Paul now look at what Jesus says over in Luke 9 26 he says whoever is ashamed same word, of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. So Jesus is telling us, hey, if you're ashamed of me right now, then guess what? When I come back, I'm going to be ashamed of you. How heartbreaking that would be that we didn't share our witness and that our Savior was actually ashamed of us when he came to collect us at the end. So you say, well, Brother Hank, how do I witness? How can I do that? Acts 1 through 8, Christ's last words to his disciples were this, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And I think the, the thing that we have to remember that when we feel convicted to share Jesus with somebody is that we're not alone. Did you catch that? that the Holy Spirit will actually come upon us. We don't go alone. Not only that, but we don't speak alone. Jesus gives us what we're to say to whoever it is we're saying it to. So let's keep that in mind. So Brother Hank, how can I witness? I think one of the most effective ways to witness is just personal testimony. Tell people about what's happened to you in your own life. You know, I'm reminded of, of the kids when they do come home to school. Don't they have stories to tell parents? When your children come back from school, don't they share these crazy stories with you, you know? What about golfers, hunters, uh, people like that? Don't they have these big stories? And of course, they come back and they embellish them somewhat. 
the deer is always bigger, the fish is always bigger, and it didn't take me as long to get to the hole in one and all that stuff, you know. So we're good at learning all of these great things. We want to rush back to tell somebody what we've seen and heard. What do we have to share about Jesus Christ? Well, he saved us, right? So you might say, well, Brother Hank, I really don't have a big testimony. Really? Jesus hasn't saved your soul? Is that something to tell somebody about? You know, I'm 49. I know I don't look it. I know I look about <laughs> 35, 29, somewhere in there, probably. But I can, I'm a testimony. I can assure you that I know a God who is faithful. Even when I'm not faithful, I can tell somebody about that. I know that God heals physically because I've been healed physically. I can tell people about that. I know God heals relationships. I know God heals finances. I know God helps us find jobs. I could go on and on and on. What sort of those things has God done for you? And can't we share that with someone else? That's your personal testimony. That is yours. Another way, folks, that we can do this is just letting the Bible speak. Just use the Bible. Let the Bible do the testimony for you. There's something in the Bible called the Roman road. Have you ever heard that? Google it sometime. Look at the scripture. Look at the questions. Some of the questions from the Roman road are, do you believe in God? Do you believe that he loves you? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for you? You know, it brings up John 3.16. We can actually use the Bible when being a witness to someone else. And there's something else that we can do. We can be a good example. How many of you know the importance of being a good example for someone else? How many of you know someone who has been a good example for you in your life and has set good examples for you in your life? My mom and dad have been married 50 plus years. What kind of an example are they to me? That Hey, you can do this, right? Even when the going gets tough, stick together, work hard together, you know, it'll work. Good example. My goodness, we have a lot of work to do as just the personal example that we set. 1 Peter 2.16 says, Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Also, parents, this is for you about setting examples. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Setting those examples, if you love your child, set that right example. Folks, then there's a number of different ways we can testify and be a witness. I went to Lisa Moreland the other day and asked her to make this t-shirt for me. It says, not a shame. It's got the Methodist, Methodist cross there. Thank you, Lisa, for doing that. I went to Hobby Lobby. I endured Hobby Lobby to go in and buy this t-shirt. Lisa had the, the letters for me. Shauna put it together. You know, the t-shirt, just wearing a t-shirt is awesome, right? You know, imagine going to Halloween over here in, East, in, in Leesville on the street that night and wearing a shirt like this. How many people are going to read that shirt? Or go to the Mayfest when you can't walk down the main street without bumping shoulders. Wear a Christian t-shirt. How many people are going to wear that t-shirt? There's one right there. Right. A lot of people just look at t-shirts. What sort of witness is that? You can wear wristbands. I saw a guy the other day and he had about three wristbands on his wrist and they were all for something. I don't know what, I don't know who he was, but he had wristbands. Is that a witness? Absolutely that's a witness. Take a Christian symbol and put it on the back of your car and it through fish so that people see that they know you're a Christian. You can get on social media, folks. Get on Facebook. Put a scripture. Put something about your life out there. There's a ton of things that you can do out there and guess what? Never say a word. You can witness without even saying a word, without opening our mouths. We can witness, and we can be a witness. Amen? So there's a number of ways. Be creative with it and finding different ways to witness about Jesus. Now, why tell people about Jesus? Why should I tell people about Jesus, Hank? There are a lot of reasons for that. One, you want them to have a good life, right? Do you know scientific studies have been done on people who are Christian as opposed to those who are not? And guess what? They found that those who are Christian have better lives, live longer, things go much better as opposed to those who do not have a faith. Why else should I be a witness? Well, I think because we want people to avoid hell. Is that a good reason? Y'all believe in hell? How many of you believe in hell? Hell's real. It is a reality. Guess what? If there's no hell, and some people do not believe that there is a hell, if there's no hell, 
Jesus wasted his time. There's a hell. He spoke about it. That's a good re reason to witness, is it not? Because by being a witness and that person accepting Christ, they're going to avoid it. And guess what? Be recipients of all that is heaven. Why else should I tell people about Jesus? Because time is never as long as we think it is. How many of you know that in five minutes you're going to be here? We just assume that. Something could happen. The Bible tells us that life is a mist. James 4, 13 through 14 says this, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Everybody in this church knows somebody who left home one day and never came back home. That's our opportunity we always may feel a little guilty for not sharing Jesus Christ with them during those moments when we had the opportunity. We have to make the most of our time. There was a young man in Winsboro, handsome young guy, ought to have been on TV. I mean, LSU student, very popular with the girls, athlete, all this. Got in a Corvette with his buddy. His buddy had been drinking, and he wrapped his Corvette around a telephone pole. He sustained such head trauma that he died in an LSU hospital, or Baton Rouge hospital. Had everything in the world going for him. Why do I mention him? Because it was the biggest funeral I've ever been a part of. They had people sitting in the back, people sitting down below. You know, we, we could have taken a lot of time to, to minister to that guy while he was still with us. So there's, there's really something that God calls us to do here, isn't there? To be a witness. How can we, if we're, being con if we're going to be committed to Christ, be committed to him without telling him about somebody else because that's what we're all here for right being committed to Christ we talked about praying reading the Bible worshiping with the heart and telling somebody about Jesus Christ because guess we may never see that person again amen amen so who's not ashamed in here of the gospel of Jesus Christ today amen amen well, if you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I want you to bow your head for a word of prayer and let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, when we think about sharing Jesus, even with our family, we can get nervous. We can be afraid. It takes courage. Just remind us all that, dear Lord, you have put us here to do that. But Father, you have given us a tool, and that tool is the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit will remove the fear and the doubt and anything that would prevent us from sharing you with somebody else. Let us be courageous. Let us be strong because, Lord, we live, in a, we live in a world where people are becoming more and more intolerant of the gospel. They don't want to hear it. In fact, dear Lord, they, there's no telling how they might react to it. So, Lord, we need an extra dose of courage. And, Father, give us that this morning as we leave here not ashamed of the gospel. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen.